Hello, everyone, and welcome to our App Creator Chat on Business Resilience. Hi, Nancy. Hello. One moment, we're having a little bit of slowness on my end. Oh, all right, here we go. To optimize your view, this is for our audience, um, engagement tools are resizable and movable. Uh, for the best viewing experience, we recommend using wired internet connection. Not sure how many folks use wired internet connection anymore. So if you are on Wi-Fi, uh, just make sure that no one's using up your bandwidth by watching streaming videos in your house or anything like that. Um, the webcast is being streamed through your computer. So for the best audio quality, um, use a headset or computer speakers and, and make sure your volume is turned up. Um, you can ask live questions during during this uh, webinar in the Q&A tool, and we'll, we'll answer via chat. And if you're having major technical issues, just consider refreshing or logging in and out. All right, and here's our, our presenters today. In conversation, we have Praveen Sashadri, uh, the founder of AppSheet and now a distinguished engineer at Google Cloud, and our app creator, Henny Sievers. Um, information Systems Manager uh, at FACES Ab Endurance. I've never been able to say that, Henny. <laughs> is that correct? <laughs> Ab Endurance is close enough, yes. Okay. All right. Um, so take it away, Praveen and Henny. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. And uh, Henny, it's uh, great to meet you, and thank you for spending time with us. Um, let's start off by just, you know, Telling the audience a little bit more about you. Um, you're in South Africa. You work at Faces Adventurance. Um, tell us more just about uh, what the organization does and what you do there. Now, we're an events organizing company. Our focus is mainly on mass participation endurance events, like trail running, um, road running, mountain biking, and so forth. The so we. We were faces took a stake in our business about a year and a half ago, and so we expanded considerably in the last last eighteen months. And then, yeah, then COVID hit. So interesting time for us as an events company. Uh, and what is your role there, Henny? I look after the systems mainly, the the databases the entry systems and so forth. So there's a lot of changes happening in our world in, in that respect. And yeah, so I'm on the IT side of things. And then on event day, I've got certain roles there as well, especially this year regarding timing, um, entries, results, and then at the event itself, registration. So before we even get into any of the technology, I'm very curious to know what the interview process is like at your organization. So if somebody wants to interview for the information systems job that you have, yeah. um, would they need to go first um, run an endurance race and get a minimum time? Is that the requirement? <laughs> yeah, no. no, no, yes and no, actually. We, we prefer to, to have people around that understands events that's passionate about the events, and that's uh, that's at least um, fit and training themselves. So it's so much easier for people to grasp what we do if they've got some some experience in our world. Well, why don't you bring some of our our audience into this world by just describing one of the you know uh, I heard you had a really big event at the start of September in near Pretoria. Could you just sort of describe what the, if you were a participant in that event, what would you have to, what adventures and endurance would you go through to sort of go through the race? So that, we've got a series here, it's called the Nissan Trail Seeker Series. It's sponsored by Nissan Vehicles. And as far as we know, it's the biggest one day mountain bike series in the world in terms of participation on the day. So usually we get in excess of two and a half thousand people taking part. In the in this COVID year, we were limited to only 500 per distance. So, but usually it's around 3,000. And there are four distances. We've got a 
70 kilometer, 45 kilometer, 20 and a 10 kilometer. So the, the event is focused on the whole family. I'm not sure what that is in miles, to be honest. But um, so the 70 kilometers are focused on the on the fit people and the racing snakes. And then the 45 is is for younger serious riders and less fit people. And then the 20K is for the young competitive riders and the moms and dads who aren't really into racing. And then the 10K are for the kids and it's just a funny bit. But if you do the 70 kilometer, you can expect the technical race with a lot of single track, difficult sections, water crossings, mud, bums, downhills, rocks. So we, we try to keep it interesting and challenging. So it's it's not the type of event you're gonna enter as your first event, do that 70K, rather start with a 20 or a 35. Yeah. This is really funny because on the one hand, um, sometimes people trying to build software also think of uh, the challenge of building software similarly. There's obstacles, there's water courses, there's mud splattered in your face, there's all these difficulties. <laughs> And what we're trying to do is make it not so interesting and not so challenging. So it's, uh, yeah. it, it's this wonderful um, analogy here. Um, yeah. it, it, tell us a bit about how you use technology in the races. What is technology used for? I mean, it seems to be mostly an outdoor physical activity. Where does your role come in? Yeah, the, I must say technology is more and more relevant. And the need also is changing very fast in terms of eventing, uh, probably across the world, but in South Africa in particular, things like live tracking, knowing where, where all the participants are at any given time. Uh, so we and then live streaming as well. So this year, especially post COVID, we were doing a lot of work on how to get the viewers involved in the event. Um, and so it's, we do, we're going through interesting exercises and we're playing a lot around with different um, streaming technologies because being in Africa, our, our reception, mobile cell phone reception, aren't consistently good where, wherever we have the events. So we tend to have events more in rural areas, um, not in the cities. So our challenge is, is connectivity. I must say. Um, so that's one of the areas we use technology is for live stream video and then at registration itself to get people, a lot of people quickly and efficiently through a registration process. So in order to time someone, you need to link a timing chip or device or code or number to the individual because you have to, of course, you can't time the individual. You have sort of, you time the the device or the number or the chip or the code. So that link must be made and must be quick, accurate and efficient. Because you don't, especially with our regular events, if you've got 3,000 people, they arrive in about a span of two hours. And in that time, you have to jump in and you must know who he is, find him quickly, assign his number, his unique number. And these days, ask all the COVID questions make sure the hands are sanitized and get them through registration quick and easy. Got it. Now, if you went back, say, five years, how were you doing all of this five years ago? Was it uh, people with uh, pen and paper at the registration desk or was it like laptops or how was it being done? Yeah, five years ago, we, we prepared um, envelopes. So we packed for the whole week before the event, we packed an envelope with a number and um, a timing chip in that envelope. And as the entries comes in on the entry system, the online entry system, we prepare each person's um, envelope for him. And at registration, the person will arrive and then you have to find him by sooner. So we pack, we used to pack it in alphabetical order on the sooner. But if, if, if the surname is, um, Bwita, for instance, they are 80 Bwitas in one event because it's such a common center. So we, yes. we had our challenges and that, that whole week leading up to the event was manic with all the packing. And then we phased the, the envelopes out 
and we went to um, registration on spreadsheets, which which worked fairly well. The challenge with that is a spreadsheet breaks easily, especially if the user isn't um, very familiar with a spreadsheet. So often we use students and they'll come and we have to quickly teach them how our entries works um, the morning of the event. Yes, and that was a that was challenging for us. And we, we, we were stuck with that process for probably four or five years. Um, and that's got us to where we are now. Yeah, so you were using spreadsheets and then, um, and now you use apps built on app sheets. So I'm sort of curious to learn how did you, uh, how did you make that transition? How did you even find that you could build applications to do this? And um, yeah, I'm sort of, uh, are you a software engineer? Is that your background or how did you get there? Yeah, no, I'm not a software engineer. But the, um, so how it happened was about, I'd say two years ago, I had this, um, I sort of came across QR codes and I thought QR codes would be a very good and efficient way to, to link a number board to a person. So luckily then we started printing the QR codes on the boards, but we, we didn't use QR codes at all for the next 18 months. And then at the beginning of lockdown, we, we went into the hard lockdown on the 27th of March of this year. And yes, and for the first time in years, I had some time on my hands. And during lockdown, I, I still remember the search I did, and it was simply for QR code scanning, how to get a QR code into a spreadsheet. Meaning if you scan it, get the data in a, in a spreadsheet. And that's where I stumbled on, um, on AppSheet. I never realized, I didn't know, there was some was something like like a um, no code, and the, I I actually thought it was an app off the shelf. So the search was simply a QR code apps, and yeah, and I started playing around. So I'm not a software engineer. I'm a, I studied industrial engineering. I don't think that's a course you have in the states. It's sort of a uh, easier way as a production engineer or a or a mm -hmm. uh, systems improvement engineer. So mm -hmm. that was my area of study, but not software at all. So you were not a software engineer. You discovered AppSheet. And um, uh, how long and how much effort did it take you to, um, from the time you sort of discovered your, your mm -hmm. web search, gave you some links to your having something working? What was that process like? Just the initial process was, look, I was totally zoned in and focused on, on getting a QR code, scanning a QR code and getting that result in the, in the spreadsheet, in Google Sheets. So that took me, that, that same evening, I had that up and running. I, I still remember, I phoned my colleague Fritz, he's the CEO of our company. Yes, and I was over the moon. <laughs> and he was in lockdown on a farm, so I, I couldn't show him, so I just took a, a video, a, like a screen video of what I did on the phone and sent it to him. Yeah. Very excited. And then I started struggling a bit. The, so it took me a few days to realize the, the power of the app lies in the data. So, so I didn't, I was so focused on the app that I didn't work on the, on the spreadsheet, on, on the Google Sheet, the data structure. And when the penny dropped that, first get your data in place, then the app's going to fall in place quick and easy. When that, when I started doing that, oh yeah, it was quick and easy for me. I, yeah, that's where I'm still today. That's awesome. So now um, you started out with some notion of the apps you wanted to build. You wanted to make sure you could scan the QR code, bring it into the spreadsheet, and so on. Um, how has that evolved over time? Have you, you know, it seems like. The requirements might have changed over time. I'm sort of curious to learn, are you still using the same apps you built in that first week then, or have you refined them and modified them a lot? Hmm. No, I've refined them considerably. The, our, our challenge is that our events are so different in, in structure that you can't use one app that's, that works for all of them. 
So for instance, that Nissan Trail Seeker series we have, we've got on the Saturday a mountain bike event and the Sunday a trail running event. And so I built the app especially for the, for the Nissan Trail Seeker mountain bike events. And then I built another one for the trail running event. And we actually use the app now as the timing device as well. So we know at what time a participant starts. And then as they come over the finish line, we just scan the QR code. And these little, um, just built a button. So you scan them and click the button and that time stamps the person. Time, that time stamp reflects in the spreadsheet and we display it live then on, uh, on a WordPress website. So it's, I actually forgot to mention earlier that that was one of the big breakthroughs um, with this new system is that we can display our results live um, on our websites. And um, then this, two weeks ago, I went to the Otter Trail Run. It's, it's probably the more, most sought out after trail run in, um, in South Africa. And there we also timed the whole event with, with AppSheet, uh, wow. with the app on AppSheet. And uh, they, the challenge there is that it's in a very, very remote area of South Africa, right on the coast. So people run 42 kilometers and 15,000 steps, um, like in stairs, off-road. And um, so we had to place uh, scanners all along that route. But the, the cell phone reception is so bad that we only managed to find three or three scanning stations that worked. So the plan for next year is to put put people there with app sheet and as as the runners come past you quickly scan the QR code and that that submits the, the timestamp and that's that will serve as a sort of a time track or a split timing for the participants which will feed live to our website. Right. And you get the benefit of the fact that the data is captured even though it's offline and when they're back online yeah. the data would be synced up and recorded. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the process of doing all this, working in areas without connectivity and so on, um, I'm curious to know, you must have run into hiccups or problems that you had to go resolve. Just before a race, are you working like late at night, trying to fix issues, adjusting things? Is that common or are you, you just build the apps a few weeks in advance and you're good? No, it's, I'm actually, I'm busy today building three apps for this coming weekend. We've got three different events on the same weekend and each event has a different app. So what I, I duplicate an app, the one that I know works and is functioning. So I use the, that Nissan Trail Seeker app sort of as my base app. And then I modify that app to, to work with the new requirements. So this, one of the apps, for instance, this weekend is, a we've got a, a, a indoor, like a cyclathlon, they call it where you a cycle farm rather, where we've got 500 people on, a in, on indoor stationary bikes riding and competing in a virtual, um, virtual race. And the app will, will serve to register them and get and lock their COVID compliance. And um, so that's the one. And so it's just much easier for me to work off something that works and to modify it. And that modification is is quick. That's why I can wait till the Tuesday or Wednesday before an event, so that I've got enough data to to make sure I I'm, I know what I'm doing on the app. Yeah, I think the indoor stationary bike thing is something I can subscribe to. I might be able to participate yes. in that event as long as nobody times me. So I should hope the app doesn't work and doesn't time me. Then I might participate in it. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> Nancy was mentioning that you ran into some situation where um, some of your equipment, uh, something didn't work at the finish line or was starting to show problems and you had to scramble with an app. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, the, at the very first Nissan Trail Seeker we had, the uh, post-COVID, where I used the app, we, we started the event and um, people were, were crossing the finish line and it was also the first time we're using this, the scanning equipment. Um, yes, and I just, 
people were scanning in, but at such a rate that I couldn't be 100% sure that every person are being scanned. And there's just too many people to, um, to double check all of that in real time. So I quickly modified or just built something on the app where we can place students on the finish line with the app and as people cross the finish line, they scan the QR code and submit. So then the, um, so the timing, the, the primary timing system times the people, but the app serves then as a backup time. So if the primary timing system didn't pick up that board, we scan it and the, the, person, the person's time will, will be about five or six seconds longer than on the, the main scan. So I was able to do that within about 15 minutes, build that functionality, and yes, we're still using it to this day at all the events, having students on the finish line doing a backup scan of every person crossing the line. Wow, that's, that must have been pretty intense. People are actually in the process of completing the race and you're, you're modifying the app to do this and then getting those volunteers out there to scan it. That's, hmm. That sounds high stress. But no, it is. I, I must say, I don't like, I don't like um, on, on the app or on the spreadsheet while the event is, is ongoing because it's just a risk of, I prefer to do that on the Thursday or Friday before the event, but that turned out very well. So, no, it was a, it's, I think it saved us that day because we, we were still learning how the primary scanning works and it was just good to have a solid backup system. Very cool. Now, um, in your uh, company now, uh, are you now considered like a software geek because you're able to build all these apps, or are you considered still considered like a cool endurance guy who happens to build apps on the side? <laughs> I hope I hope the second, but I'm I'm probably seen as a geek in the company. I'm I'm the only person alive that I know that lies in bed watching Google Sheets and App Sheet videos. So that's fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, we should get you this unique, you know, certificate, you know, and that may be yeah. true. Usually, you know, that's why we recommend watch App Sheet videos if you have trouble falling asleep and, you know, um, but <laughs> um, excellent. Now, um, what advice do you have for other people in other companies, whether other organizations, teams, doesn't matter if they're in fitness or in any other area, because you went through a really amazing journey, right? You're a person who is technology aware. Um, you wanted to solve a problem, you saw something, and then you realized that you can apply it to many other things. And that's sort of the journey you've been describing. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any broad advice for you know, other people who might be, you know, a little either intimidated or not sure if this is something they should do. Yes. The, uh, I would say, firstly, jump in and try to familiarize yourself with, with AppSheet. Watch the videos. The, the videos for sure was, was the key to, to our success on this side. It's, um, I find the same with Google Sheets. If you, the sky is literally the limit. If you can think of something you want to do, you probably can. You must just find out how. And and that's sort of the attitude I have towards building these apps. Is that I haven't yet come across something I want to do which I couldn't figure out to do eventually. Some of the things are more are harder to do than others, but. Yes, just try and break stuff and try it in. And then the other piece of advice is concentrate much more on your data before you start building the app. Because I, in the beginning, I was so excited building the app that I neglected to neglected to spend time on on the data. So if your data is well structured, well planned, the app will fall into place much easier. I don't know if you give that same advice to to other guys, Praveen. That was that was my experience. Mm -hmm. um, this is that's great advice. Thank you, Henny. Um, I have one request, which is um, uh, both Nancy and I would love if at your next event, if you need any, you know, customer support, you know, uh, problem shooting, whatever troubleshooting, 
um, uh, we are really dying to make a trip out to South Africa. So the moment this, uh, you know, the restrictions are lifted, um, uh, we're going to go sh come show up to do customer support at one of your events. It's just going to be our excuse to make the trip out there. <laughs> yes, I, I've got lots for you to do. <laughs> yes, you're very welcome. I, be great. Yeah, I'm going to enroll Nancy in the in the endurance race so that I'll just be I'll just be an observer. I'll be one of the volunteers. I think that's the deal. But I must say it's not going to be holiday, Praveen. It's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's it the most fun work there is. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you yeah. if you're ever around or come to South Africa, it's a, uh, it's not what the press says it's a it's a friendly and an awesome country so you, you're always welcome and we need to help uh, <laughs> yeah i look forward to that henny thank you so much it was great talking with you uh, what an interesting topic uh, uh, you know what an interesting story thank you so much and appreciate your sharing it with our audience hmm. um, a big thanks to you praveen you build an awesome product all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Praveen and Henny. Um, yeah. And if you've asked a question over the Q&A, um, I will be sure to get to that. Have a nice day.